The glue compressor is based on the SSL master bus compressor, and it can be used for either dialing in a bass, like I'm about to do, or tame a guitar, or it can even be used for mastering. It's a very versatile compressor. I'm going to use it to add in some punch for bass. After dropping this bad boy on my bass, I'll raise the attack to 10. The attack adjusts how long it takes to reach the full compression once the signal, in this case a bass note, exceeds the threshold. By raising the attack, we'll be preserving the latent attack already present in my bass patch. On the swing side, we'll drop the release down to one millisecond, which is a setting to control how long it takes for the compression to stop after the signal drops below the threshold. This setting will indeed ensure we have a very punchy bass. Finally, I'll set my compression ratio to four, lower the threshold down to about minus 27 dB, to ensure that my bass is fully compressed and raise the makeup so that this nice compressed bass can be heard. I'll also enable the oversampling by right clicking on the glue compressor, checking off the function. Oversampling is used to preserve higher frequencies in the signal. And since I'm trying to keep my bass nice and punchy, preserving some of the high frequencies in the initial attack will do just fine. Now that I've got a big punch bass, it would be a nice time to make some variations on the repetitious pattern I've had going. A couple of new MIDI functions that can be wonderful for assisting in the never-ending endeavor of creating cool MIDI patterns are the really handy invert and reverse note functions, which can be found down here in the MIDI editor. Reverse, of course, reverses the pattern in which the selection of notes are playing. After copying my clip, I'll select the last three notes in my pattern and press reverse. Instant new variation. And from here, I can continue to reverse other sections or invert selections. The invert notes button flips the selection so that the highest note in the selection is now the lowest note. While we're here, let's create another clip. And now, invert a selection of bass notes. Aside from actual melodic notes, imagine these quick, simple functions for drums and other percussive parts. These are thoughtful functions to keep your workflow quick while keeping your workflow sounding fun and spontaneous. Oh. By the way, since I'm selecting and editing in the MIDI clip editor, now would also be a good time to show you another Live 9 embellishment. When you press the enter button, you toggle between time selection and note selection. All right, now that our bass is situated, let's continue in fleshing out our song with some vocals and in doing so, see what some of the enhancements are to some of the existing live effects in Live 9. 